I have to ask you about your perspective on what we're seeing in, in the markets right now. You worked for Larry Summers. He says we're headed for a recession. You worked at Google amidst the dot-com bust. You helped navigate Facebook through the financial crisis. Where is this going? Well, thanks for having me, Emily, and welcome back from maternity leave. This must be a um, broad <laughs> move coming back. <laughs> You know, look, these are unprecedented times and these are scary times. And of course, it's not going to be business as usual for any business. So we're all watching this carefully. You know, at Facebook, we're really focused on not just ourselves, but really the small businesses that use our platform, because this can be just devastating for small business. We rolled out last week a business hub trying to help small businesses connect with people online. Some of them are able to replace some of their brick and mortar walk-in business with some online other people are working hard to keep the lights on. And we want to help support that because the impact to small businesses is going to be very serious and very real and people, people need jobs. Facebook's headquarters are in the Bay Area. We're going into a Bay Area wide shelter in place order tomorrow. What does this mean for Facebook? How are you handling this? We've always already been aggressively pushing people to work from home. Any job that can be home is home. For contractors, we're paying whether or not they're sick, if their work, ha if their work, you know, can be done anywhere. And for the critical jobs where we still have people coming into the office, we're getting as much of that home as possible, and we're working on reducing the size of the population there, just so we can keep our services up, protect our people who are working for us, but also keep providing the services we provide all around the world, which we think are increasingly important in this time when people are socially isolated. We're seeing more people turn to our products, especially video chat and messaging products so that they can stay connected. Schools across the country are closed and you are launching a massive initiative to help feed families in the local area. A lot of people don't realize that families depend on schools for hot meals. Um, talk to us about this effort, what it involves and how other people can join you. Well, thanks for asking, Emily. This is so important. So food insecurity is a major issue in this country. One in eight children in America doesn't know where their next meal is coming from, and one in three in Silicon Valley. So this is something I've been working on for a very long time. And then just a few days ago, my fiance and I helped Second Harvest, our local food bank, launch the COVID-19 emergency fund to feed families. A small group of families got together and started this off with a $6 million group donation. And then we've gone out to our donors and to Facebook. My Facebook fundraiser has raised almost $200,000 in just a few, ra few days. And I think people realize kids get a lot of kids, 30 million children in this country get 10 out of 21 meals at school at a free and reduced basis. And so we need to help these families replace that food. There is a food bank in every local area. You can go to Feeding America and find yours. But I would just love to see people launch Facebook fundraisers or any way we can support people because it's not just health risk people have. It's a very serious risk of meeting basic needs. And food, of all things right now, is something people desperately need and people are really worried about getting Speaking about needs, people are desperate for information, and the coronavirus seems to present a unique opportunity for people to panic and people to seed misinformation. Everything from fake cures to who uh, created the coronavirus or that this is a media-inspired fantasy. Uh, when it comes to politicians, when it comes to celebrities or influencers on Facebook or Instagram, how are you handling potential misinformation or misleading claims at a time when we are in the middle of a public health crisis? Well, we're responding to this with all hands on deck. We are taking down any harmful misinformation on the coronavirus. We're working with WHO very closely and directly, taking down things they think are harmful right away, working with local health ministries. We're trying to get good information out to people Tom, my fiance and I, we just did asked by the WHO director a hand washing video and we're asking celebrities across Facebook and Instagram, anyone with a big following to share good information. So it's about taking down the bad and about getting out the good. We're also partnering with the UN Foundation and the WHO to launch a COVID response fund for them. We have a $10 million match. We've already raised 3 million on Facebook. 
and we're going to do our match whether or not we hit it, but we really hope people will jump in. And we're going to do the same for the CDC coming very soon. So this is about taking down the bad information, but also getting the good information and support out to people and to these incredible organizations like the WHO and the CDC that are going to need everyone to be doing what they can do to reduce the spread of this virus. What about misinformation in private groups where sometimes some of the most critical misinformation resides and a lot of that is medical misinformation? Is Facebook hands off there when it comes to misinformation in private but on Facebook? With COVID-19, we are not. As soon as we can find it, if it is harmful misinformation, particularly the misinformation the WHO or local health ministries are most worried about, we're getting it down as quickly as we can. But we're also seeing a lot of Facebook groups doing amazing things. There are groups in Italy, which has been just particularly hard hit, getting together online to provide support. There's a doctor in Lombardy, Italy, very hard hit area, who's been providing services to patients, not even her own patients, just people in the area who are suffering from depression, suffering from isolation, suffering from anxiety online. We're seeing churches and synagogues put their services online and use Facebook groups to reach their community. So this is a time we've seen this through other disasters, even though I don't think we've seen anything like this, where people come together to support each other in any way they can. And we're going to do all we can to keep facilitating that. Cheryl, Facebook is down almost 14% with the rest of the market. How big an economic downturn are you preparing for and how well positioned is Facebook's ad business to weather this? Well, this is not going to be business as usual. And the marketing industry is certainly, you know, going to see a real impact. I don't think anyone knows how big. And so we're going to watch and look. But again, we know that we can keep paying our employees, paying our contractors. We know we can keep the lights on. Whereas so many small businesses around the country and the world do not have that luxury. People are, you know, working paycheck to paycheck. And so that's where we're really focused on our efforts because that's much more important than anything we could do for our own company. And so you're going to see, we announced the business hub we put out last week, and you're going to see more coming from us, including this week, in big efforts to help small businesses around the world. Meantime, Cheryl, the panic across the country, life being disrupted, not enough testing kits. What do you need from U.S. leadership, from governments around the world to inspire confidence right now? Well, I'm not a health expert. And at Facebook, we are relying very heavily on the health experts. I think it's clear that we need a very strong response from our government, from our health, from our health care system. We're going to need a really strong response to help people socially isolate. You know, any unnecessary contact right now is just avoidable. And we've taken that very seriously at Facebook. And I know my fiance and I have taken that very seriously for ourselves. But we also you know, know that the government, local, state, national, is gonna have to have a strong economic response because we're already seeing people suffer. That's why I was so grateful to the people across Silicon Valley who donated to our food bank. I'm already hearing from people around the country who wanna set up donations to their food bank. This is serious and we all have a very deep responsibility to do everything we can to help keep other people safe. And that means cutting down on all of our social activity, anything unnecessary, so that the people on the front line, my sister's a pediatrician, she has to go to work. The more we all stay home when we can, the safer it is for her and other health workers, and also to support people financially through this very serious crisis.